And then we're going to be using Prezi today. And then I'm over here at Prezi. And now I'm going to go to Prezi.com. I'm already logged in. I'm going to log out and show you what you should see. You should see when you go to Prezi.com, you should see this. All you got to do is click on the Get Started. And then instead of creating an account with all this filled in, you can just go down to the bottom and click Sign Up with Google, or, or it'll recognize you have an account if you already have signed in. And I can, since I have an account, it'll just let me in and sign me in with Google. So just cl click on the... Uh, create account with Google or, re or, or register with Google then it'll take you into Prezi and then of course they always want you to upgrade for the paid version and what we want to do here is create a new presentation so I'll give you a little time there to go to Prezi.com sign uh, after make sure you sign in uh, with Google and then you should have this page and while you're signing in, I'll show, I'll demonstrate a presentation I created a while back here. And let's see if this looks decent here. Let's try this one. Let's see what this one looks like. I can play this one I created before. Notice I'm in the cloud. I think there is a Prezi app you can install on mobile devices. I haven't installed. A, I don't know if there's a desktop Prezi, but there is a a presenter that you can have on your mobile device. Yes, ma'am. You can try that. I don't know if it'll let you share it. You give it a try. I don't know if I don't know if it'll. But if you just sign in with Google, it's it's free. If you really, oh, it didn't do that for me. Maybe that's because I had I already had an account, and so it didn't tell me. Well, here's a here's what a presentation would look like. I'm going to play this one. And. Present means I can play it. Now, you have a mobile player. You can just start up the app and, and, and log in and find the Prezi. And here is my presentation. It shows you the big picture. This is the approach Prezi has, is you have a big map that you fly over as you think of your topic. And, the, and way back when this guy invented Prezi, it was like, you know, he, he thought in a different way. He always wanted the big picture and then zoom on small pieces of it. PowerPoint is more sequential. Think of something, go to the next slide, where his idea was I have a, a, like a picture of a guitar, I want to learn about the guitar, I fly over the picture of the guitar as I look at the different pieces. Or a topic is kind of thinking of mind map. Well, here's what happens when I click on a, the next slide. I fly in to a section on that background, and here is a little blurb about that location with a scripture reference. And then if I click or hit next, I think a picture fades in. There it goes, Paul and Barnabas off. They should be heading to a ship. They sail over to, to Cyprus, and there is a pic scripture passage about that. And click the next. There's the image of them before the magician bar Jesus. Click the next slide. Now they're sailing over to Pamphylia. There old John left them, bailed on them. And then here they're there. They're, confronting John or something, they're getting off the ship, and now they're traveling through Iconium, and now back to the big picture. So I didn't, I didn't complete the whole trip going through all, and then sailing back to, to Antioch. That gives you the idea of what you can do with Prezi. In a big picture, flying over it, creating slides along the way that, that are located on the big picture. So let's create something like that from scratch and just get a little impression of Prezi and how it will work. So I'm going to do new presentation and this word failed us last time. Let's see if it will work now. I'm going to click new presentation and I'm going to create from scratch. Let's learn it by creating from scratch. And that, this is where I may have failed before. Let's see what happens. Last time it got stuck on this page forever. And let's see if that happens to us today. If it does, we have a we have a alternative. Now, while that's spinning, 
between classes, I did start one and it looked like Prezi was working. And let me show you what I have. This is what you're supposed to see is I have a, a presentation and I can create it from scratch. This one, as I have various slides, notice how they are located in different places on the big picture. And if it doesn't load for you, like it's not loading for me, maybe it just doesn't like Firefox. I thought that maybe it, that had to do with it. In last class, I did switch over to Chrome, and it still took forever to load. I'm going to do one more thing here. Let's, let's try a, uh, I'm going to bring up Prezi.com on a new, new slide, and maybe it's, it should recognize I'm logged in. Let's see if a new presentation here also spins forever. just to see if it has to do with my browser. Is it doing that for you? Is it letting you in at all? Some got in, some didn't. So it seems unpredictable. I don't know if it's our internet connection. As far as I can tell, our internet connection is working fine. I'm not seeing the base, my basic test showing that it's communicating to the world. But unless everybody can get in, it's going to be a sad for someone that just watches the spinning and, everyone, and some others can make a presentation. So how many is it just spinning for you? OK, about half the class. So, so something's going wrong with Prezi. I may, I'm about to cry because Prezi is, is kind of nice. Uh, it's a, what I like about it is it's kind of a whole different approach to presentations, where it's that big picture, and then you create slides that fly in onto the big picture in various ways. And what we're going to do is create a picture for the main slide, and then all these sub pictures. To, to fly in. But if yours is just spinning, like mine is when I start a new one, I don't want you to get stuck just staring at that. So our alternative is, instead of go working with Prezi, the alternative is we're going to go to uh, a handy alternative I use all the time over at Google Slides. So let's get this John Smart. Let's get him logged in to his Emmaus account mail.google.com and let's get logged in as Jay Smart. I'll log myself out and log in as Jay Smart. Use another account. Oh, I want to go with I'm gonna go with my Firefox account. Let's see, go to the Firefox account. There we go. Now let's go in. I think it'll automatically take me in to Jay Smart's account. There we go. So I'm logged in as JSmart. Now I can, in my account there, I'm going to create a, in my drive, I'm going to go to my drive there. And in my account there, I'm going to find a CS101 folder by searching for CS101. And if I don't have a CS101 folder, I'm going to make one. I have a lot of, I have a lot of folders. There's a fall 21. Let's make a new folder. Make it CS101 fall 24. N the plus, upper left plus, and I create new folder. And there's my folder. And inside of that folder, I'm going to create a Google presentation. New Google Slides. Now, you don't have to create the folder if you, if you don't have that many files there. I just have so many I need to create subfolders. The key thing is we're going to create a slide presentation and learn a little bit about Google Slides. Although we wanted to learn about Prezi, but Prezi is letting us down, still spinning away. I think it, it must have something to do with too many people from the same site it just doesn't like because half of you got in and then it started blocking me as well as others. So here in the presentation, how many have used Google Slides? Okay, so you're pretty familiar with, oh, this is going to be easy for you. All right. So uh, we'll try to do a similar thing. Uh, can't quite be as fancy, and we'll learn that the, the, the transitions aren't as fancy, uh, but it is free. It's in the cloud, and that means I can go from any computer to my account, my drive at Google, and I can create, create a presentation. And what's wonderful about it, I can... If I'm planning on making sure I have a backup in case the internet is down, I can do file, st 
download as a PowerPoint. I can always download as PowerPoint once I've created it. Yes, ma'am. Question over there. I went into the folder by just navigating into it by double clicking and then I just knew Google slide once I'm in the folder when I create a new slide it'll create it within that folder now before I forget let's go ahead and give it a title uh, let's call it CS 101 Google slide uh, how about it's it instead of the Google slide how about Paul's journeys And once I save it, I believe it should show up in my Google Drive. There it is. Let's see if I refresh. It should have the new name now. Oh, it hasn't given it the new name yet. Not sure why. Oh, look at that. It got, well, it had the untitled. Let's refresh again. It should show the, there, now it's showing the new name. It took a while for it to show on the listing of files there. So this is how I rename it. Just up there and replace the name. Let's give it a title. Let's call it Paul's, Paul's Journeys. Paul's Travels. It works great in Prezi because I have a map in the background that I fly over. Let's see if we can make something similar but using Google Slides instead. Uh, missionary Travels. Missionary Journeys. Starting with X. Starting in X 13. Well, let's get an image of Paul. So can we get an image of Paul here? Let's <coughs> click here, zoom out on my menu, zoom in here on my slide. Let's get an image. How do I bring in an image? Well, I have insert up here, and there I can have insert a image. And in insert image, I have the choice of uploading an image that I have, searching the web for an image, gifts and stickers, I'm not sure what that's about, or I could search for photos if I have I'm using the photo app in my Google Drive, hunt for one that I've saved to my drive, take a picture with my camera. How about we go search the web? And over here under search, I'm essentially using images.google.com, I believe, to search for Apostle Paul. Lots of pictures of Apostle Paul, very well-known figure. Pick a picture, any of them. I think I'll pick this one. And now we find out what can we do with images in Google Slides. I can adjust their size. I can rotate them with a little rotate handle at the very top, even though it's not showing a circle. It's a, that is a rotate handle. And let's see, can I arrange it and put it behind the text? Let's see here, right click, order, send to back. And I can even move my title. Let's see, let's left align that title just so I don't tromp over the image. There's the left align. And let's left align that guy too. Alignment left. And I can adjust my image. What other image, oops, what other image adjustments do I have? Let's select it and then I can use my arrow keys to put position it. I can grab that and rotate it different ways. What else can I do with images? Let's see here. There's format options that show up here. On the, on the uh, additional menu, there's also animation. Let's check out what we have for format options. I have size and rotation. I can recolor. Remember, we could recolor. Let's see. There's my recolor choices, similar to the picture recoloring. You can choose any of them or leave it alone. Let's see. I'm going to choose that one just for fun and adjust other adjustments. Let's see, I can adjust the opacity, the brightness, the contrast. Is there, oh, I can't do any bevel. I can't do any soft edges. I do have drop shadow, uh, but it is but it is something I have to adjust. I don't have presets. So I can manually adjust a, a drop shadow I can choose the color of my drop shadow. That's something I couldn't do. I don't think I could do that in PowerPoint. I can adjust the angle of it. I think I'll have it coming that way. And 
I can adjust my radius of the blur. I can blur my, my shadow. Similar thing is I, I think I can do all these except for uh, the color in PowerPoint, but I don't have the fancy 3D rotation or bevel or glow, but I do have drop shadow. Oh, and I can do reflection. So let's add a reflection and I can manually adjust the distance. It, get, it looks like it gives me a preset, but I can still adjust my reflection. So learning the capabilities of Google Slides, part of the limits on the capability is because your browser is doing all the work. And your browser can't do as much work as PowerPoint can being an application. But it is nice that uh, I can do this without having to install anything on my computer. As long as I have a browser, I can make presentations. Yeah, I don't only have to have PowerPoint, but I can create a PowerPoint fo file by when I'm done. I can download it as PowerPoint. And people will think I've done all my work in PowerPoint and it's actually been done in Google Slides. Notice I could also save it as just an image of the current slide or even a PDF document, just like we could do in, in PowerPoint, save or print to PDF. So there's my first slide. <clears throat> now let's, since we can't use Prezi, it's still spinning for me, that will fly over an image or a map of the uh, Mediterranean and show me my various locations. Let's do something like that in Google Slides. First thing I want to do is create a new slide. I can click new slide here. That creates a new slide. Default title with content. I can choose the layout later on. If I didn't like that layout, I could change the layout. Uh, let's add an image to the background that then we can have Paul sailing over and have perhaps even zoom in on that section. How about that? Let's get an image of the map of the Mediterranean. Remember how I got an image? I can go here now, I can do insert image, or I could go with the insert menu. Right, there's the insert image right there. And let's go search the web for this one. It remembers my last search. Let's look for, uh, let's add Paul uh, map journeys. Look at that, it automatically comes up with maps of various missionary journeys. We might as well focus on the first missionary journey and some have maps, some have others, but the maps show up. I could look for Missionary Journeys maps, but I just added Map Journey and I, and I got a decent selection. Let's see, do we have, we don't, but we don't have the first Missionary Journey map. Here's one that has all of them. Maybe I'll look for uh, Missionary Journeys. And I'm going to go with this map this time. And I can double click or click once and then do insert. Oh, look at that. It fits nicely on my slide. Now, I would like this slide to, or this picture to be uh, behind all my text. So let's right click on it, order, send to back. And now black text on a black and yellow map isn't going to be so good. Maybe I could, should I recolor the map or should I change the color of my text? Hmm. I'm thinking I'm going to change the color of my text. So let's recolor that map image and let's see what colors I can change it to. How about a gray or a blue? How about a bluish? The text is still not that readable. Uh, what other color should I have? Yellow? Mm, I don't know about yellow. Mm, maybe a light gray. Almost. Well, that's almost like it was before. I guess I'll make my I'll make my text stand out by make, giving it a, a better color, or I could just make my text background opaque. So let's have them. Let's have a title here. Uh, let's have them uh, leaving Antioch. For, oh, before I make my first slide, let's see, we'll, we'll get our text and our titles, and then our subsequent slides, we can just tame, change the titles and text. So let's do Leaving Antioch. And let's see what we can do with that to make it more readable. Uh, 
I think I can fill it. Let's see, I can choose a fill of a light gray. That makes it a little more readable. I could change the text color here to be a bright color. Oh, no, that was the line color. Uh, I want to change the text color. There's the text color. No. So I do have the red line around it. I have the text selected. Uh, where's my text color? There's the text color hiding under there. I could change the text color to a red if it'll ha stand out a little bit. I'm going to turn my outline off. That's a little more readable. So the, the white background as well as a different color. You don't have to choose red. That could be annoying. And now let's put a scripture passage referencing the leaving of from Antioch. And I'm going to find up, open a new tab, and I'm going to find the, the my favorite Bible passage reader, BibleGateway.com. BibleGateway.com. Great place to find passages. Read it in whatever versions you you like. I'm going to choose ESV. And then search for Acts 13, where everything begins with Paul's and Barnabas' journey. Close that extra page there and copy and paste the first little paragraph. Control C, copy. And back in my slide. Let's make the text red right away. And if I do Control V, paste. It wants to use the font where I got the text from. But if I do a control shift V paste, it keeps the color of the font I have already set. Control shift V is very handy. I don't tromp over the font that I wanted it to be written in. And let's choose the background of that text box to be a fill of, how about the light gray? Less obnoxious than a, than a white. And let's adjust our text box. It will automatically rewrap the text for me. And we'd like to focus on Antioch here in some way. I'm going to enlarge the text here. Let's see, if I have the text box selected, will a control shift greater than work? Yes, a control shift greater than will enlarge my text. That's about as large as I want to be. Now we would like to point and indi indicate the, the place that they're at relative to the travels by somehow giving attention to Antioch. Now in Prezi, I could easily zoom in to that location on the map. What could I do to highlight Antioch? Could I zoom that image? Let's see, is there an animation of the image? Let's see if I could do an animation zoom in on Antioch. I don't think there is, but let's find out. Is there a animate? There's an animate. What can I do to animate? I can have a appear. What are my choices of animations? Let's try. Not have what around it? How did you make your text box smaller so that it was just like a bunch of stripes at the bottom and it was a little bit Oh, I just I just select on the text and enlarge my font. Control shift greater than to enlarge the font. Like that, and then it, uh, there was a small text, I just enlarge it to fill the box. You can you can also just adjust the box size too, and it'll rewrap for you. And notice with uh, with with uh, Google Slides, it will overflow the box. And I think PowerPoint does this as well. It'll still overflow the box, but I do want that box to be behind it so it's readable and not have the map making interfering with my reading, readability of the text. So the box surrounds it. It has a gray fill just to make the text more readable. And I'm going to adjust it just so it wraps nicely. There we go. Now, to highlight Antioch, yes? What about? Oh, that was that was I was thinking of animating the picture. I selected that picture, and I chose animate or insert animate. Then that pops up. But I'm seeing that the animation doesn't doesn't give me any option except for the appearance of that picture. I can't zoom that picture, so I'm gonna not have any animation on the picture. So I'm gonna delete any animation. I want it to be there. So I'm 
closing any animation and so then you don't really to see the motion need to see the motion right now so I'm gonna close that I'm gonna create an arrow and then animate an arrow or how about this how about we create a circle and circle Antioch how about that let's let's add a shape and have it animate in and circle Antioch and let's see what happens so let's go shape go oval Let's go draw an oval around Antioch. And it's gonna to wanna to fill it. Well, let's change the fill to be transparent over here under the fill color. Let's change the fill color. I think a right, will right click do that to me as well? Right click, uh, no, there is no right click fill color, but I can come over here with it selected. There I can change the fill to transparent. And let's see, the outline color, let's change that to be something a little more contrast. Uh, maybe not as obnoxious as a bright red, maybe a dark. And why isn't there? Oh, and let's make it a thicker, thicker border. Oh, wrong picture. Select that circle again, and let's make that a thick outline there. Now we would like that, that circle, let's have that animate. So when I click, then that circle will appear. So, how do I animate that? I can right click. Is there a right click animate? Nope, there's not a right click animate. But I can come up here and do either insert animation or up here animate from the extra menu. So insert animation or here animate and that's where that motion menu appears. Whenever I do animation, this motion thing appears. Notice there is no transition coming in. I could add a transition at this point. But uh, what I want to do is animate that circle. And right now the default animation is appear. I can change that from an appear to fade in or fly in. Oh, and look, at, I have exit animations as well. So let's go, uh, how about we have that circle fade in? So remind us, there's where Antioch is. Now, if I would like to focus on that piece of the map, in, in Prezi, I could just set my slide there, and my slide would zoom into that piece on the map in the background. We have to do an alternative. Instead of zooming in on Antioch, what I need to do is make a copy of this map, crop it to the city of Antioch, enlarge it, and then have that fade in. So let's see how we can do that. Select the outer image that I have the map of. Make a copy of it by doing a control C or right click copy, right click paste. Oh, it says, sorry, don't, do, don't use right click, do the control V. Okay, thank you very much. Now let's crop that image, which will then be zoomed in on Antioch. So how do I crop an image? Let's see here, let's try a right click. There is a right click. Oh, there's no right click crop. Let's go over here to edit. Or oh, maybe it's the down guy. There it is. There's the cropping tool. Now I can crop that image to zoom in on Antioch. Hit enter to finish the cropping. Uh, hiding under the three dots. I was hoping it would appear under the right click, but it's hiding under the three dots right there. Now I can enlarge that picture. And now we can have that picture zoom in by animating the entrance. So have to do a little more work than I could, then Prezi automatically kind of does this. Here I'm now gonna animate this picture that I just have zooming in on Antioch. And now add an animation. Because it's selected and the motion menu is still showing, I could just click right here and say add animation. It will automatically add an animation to whatever is selected right now. And see it shows that picture. Let's change that from an appear to be zoom in. So it'll act as though I'm zooming into that part of the map. Let's see what it looks like. If I click play, there is the map. Click. Oh, 
play that play and now I have to click here there it shows me the circle fading in and now zooming in that's not, I don't like that zoom so it's, it's zooming in from the left I thought it was just zoom in from the center and then I can stop my playing of it let's see what are the options I have here for zoom in let's see I have zoom in zoom out huh I'm not terribly happy with the zoom in from the left but it works okay so I have let's see let's play this whole slide now and see what it looks like I, th I don't I don't want to covering up my text so let me let me adjust my text a tiny bit so my let me just reduce the size of my text a bit and push the box over and then let's see what it looks like see then I won't cover up my text with that zoomed in Antioch now let's see what this looks like leaving Antioch you know I think I'll have my text fade into and now I click it circles Antioch click again and then Antioch will zoom and there's Antioch let's uh, modify this a little bit let's put Acts 13 not just th number 13 and I'm gonna have this text also fade in so let's choose and add animation and instead of the appear let's change that to be a fade in but notice the order since I chose to animate it now it's putting it the third animation I can grab and adjust the order of my animation just by clicking and adjusting that up very much like our animation pane in PowerPoint so there's the fading in of that portion of the map the circle around it fades in and then the map itself fades in now I want the similar effect for the for the first location they go to they're gonna be going to Cyprus let's go ahead and since I have this animated with some images how about we duplicate this and change the text and then we'll adjust some animation around Cyprus oh and I'm missing something we should we need a picture of Paul to appear Paul and Barnabas let's let's add a picture of Paul and Barnabas to this so let's go insert image or I could just click here for image that's going to search the web for Paul and Barnabas and whatever picture I find I'm going to double click to bring it in let's see them being sent some interesting pictures of Paul and Barnabas how about Paul and Barnabas Antioch there we go we have the being sent from Antioch I like that I like that guy and I'm gonna reduce that and have it appear right there I'll also have this guy fade in and I think I'll have him fade in after I've faded in the image of Antioch maybe rotate a little bit just for a little bit of visual effect and it's it's uh, set to oh it's it's animate him by clicking add animation change it from up here to fade now I can duplicate the slide and I'll have similar images that I can modify but at least I have all my text color is the same I don't have to worry about redoing all that so now I'm gonna right click on the image duplicate slide and now I can modify my second slide I'll bring in a different image here let's see I'll delete that one or can I change the image without changing the animation what will happen is can I change my image I can edit the image somewhere where is the edit can I edit my image select I don't see that here replace image there we go replace image is there a right click oh there it is yeah replace image so keeping the same effects but replacing the image let's go again search the web and let's look for Paul on Cyprus and the magician and there's the confrontation of the magician on Cyprus you can choose any image I will pick let's see what's a good one I'll pick that one 
So I like that. I still have, I haven't lost any of the animation of that image. I want to change this image to be a cropped image around Cyprus. How about I can just, could I perhaps just recrop this? Let's see what I can do. Is there a right click? There's the crop there now. Let's reset that image and recrop it. Or what if I do this? Let's see if I do crop image. Oh, look at that. I can just recrop. I can just adjust what is showing up in the cropped image by just adjusting the image behind it. And now I can, that can be now focusing on Cyprus. The circle, I don't think I need the circle anymore. Uh, how about we just delete that circle? Um, this is something you don't often do, but this is a handy time where an image that's already cropped, but I just want to choose what it's cropping to. I can keep the exact same size of the crop just and just drag inside of it and adjust where it's being cropped. And then hit enter to finish the cropping. But to get at the selection of that circle, I think I have to move the picture. Let's see if I can, can I select that circle to delete it. I don't see any other way except moving the picture so I can select that and delete. Or how about this? How about I'm not going to delete that picture. How about I move that picture to circle Cyprus on the big image, and then then I'll zoom into Cyprus. How about that? There we go. And now let's change our text of our verse. Let's go to Cyprus now, and we don't want a huge amount of text. How about just verse 6? Copy, Control-C, copy. Come back here. And remember the Control, or Select All, and then Control-Shift-V. If I did a Control-V, it replaces it with all the formatting. But if I can do a Control Shift V, it remembers the red background. Let's enlarge the text by selecting the text box itself, Control Shift greater than. And I can adjust the size of my box here too. And instead of leaving Antioch, oh, make sure we put Acts, Acts 13, verse 6 here. And how about conflict with the magician? Conflict on Cyprus. On Cyprus. Let's play this slide to just see how it, how it works. Notice, oh, let's add, let's do some image modifying. Let's add some drop shadow to that. Let's see, format options. Right click on an image, format options. Let's give him a little drop shadow. I don't have bevel, but I do have drop shadow. Give it a little drop shadow. I can adjust. I have to adjust it manually. I don't have presets, but I can change the color of my drop shadow just like I could before. Uh, let's see. Let's make the angle that direct angle. Make it go down to the right, and I'll give it a little blur. I think drop shadow with a little blur is more effective than a sharp edge on it. And. I'll leave the opacity at half percent. And let's see, the color, I think, let's see, I think I'll stick with the, with the dark. I could change, you can, you're welcome to change the color of your drop shot if you like. Maybe a little purpley, just for a highlight. Now let's see what this looks like. Play this slideshow from this slide. There is my conflict on Cyprus. Click to fade in the text. Click again to fade in or to circle Cyprus. The next click should zoom in on Cyprus. And then the next click should, should fade in the picture just like before. So I notice the strategy here. I create my first slide with the animations I like. The second slide, replacing images, which keeps the same kind of st format from, from image to image. And now to finish up, Although we'd like to do more, we would like to make sure that other people can, sh can see this wonderful presentation. It is already on my drive here. I could say, I could download it as a, as a PowerPoint copy, or I could go back to my presentation and share it. We always wanna learn about sharing. We even learn about sharing in college. Share, and we wanna share to, not restricted, but give access to anyone with the link. 
if the, your instructor can't can't see it, you get a zero for it because he can't tell if you've done anything. So, share it with anyone with the link. Uh, upper right, upper right, share right there. Upper right, Ch change your access to anyone with the link. Copy the link, and now go over to Schoology. And in Schoology, to submit the assignment, we click on the assignment and say, sorry, it wasn't Prezi. Under Create, on the Create tab, put link to Google Slides. So sad, I could not use Prezi. Paste the link, Control V, paste that long, ugly link select it and turn it into an active link, inline link, and paste that URL there too. And click open and link a new tab. So now you have pasted it. Let me do that pasting and turn it into link again. Paste the link, select through it, click on the chain link, and paste it in the URL that it'll take me to. We like to open link a new tab. Save that change to the link and submit. And now when I click on that or view the submission, I can, I don't want to resubmit. I can click my assignment submitted. I should be able to click on that link that shows up in the submission. And it takes me to that document in the cloud, shared with anyone. Uh, does it give you edit permission? Let me check the sharing on that. I, I don't know if it gave you a choice. Anyone with a link? Oh, you can change. Yeah, they're, by default, they're a viewer. You could give edit privileges to anyone with a link as well. That'd be a dangerous thing to do. They can mess up your presentation. But you can, by default, it makes them a viewer. So share anyone with a link, and it's available. And it shows here that you can copy the link make it public on the web. Let's see if there's another option under file, under share under to the file menu, you can actually make it a web page that people could see. Not quite as interesting. I'm going to just I'm just curious what that looks like. I'm going to click publish and just just out of curiosity just see what it looks like when it's published to the web. You don't have to do that though, if, unless you'd like to play with that. Here's what it looks like published to the web. There's what I get and let's see I can arrow through no oh it does have the animation if I publish to the web look at that so I could I don't have to share it as a Google Doc I could share it as a presentation they hit F11 and oh F11 doesn't work here there F11 does work F11 would let me present it from a link on the web so share it as a web page basically you're sharing your presentation Lots of fun things you can do. Sorry we cannot get Prezi to work. Prezi was working for me, but I don't want to leave half of you staring at just a spinning circle. So complain to Prezi for not letting all of us at MAS use Prezi at the same time. I think it, I, I'm still suspicious that our ISP is blocking access some, in some way. That can't prove it. All right, see you at Chapel.